everyone, I hope that you are having a great day. My name is Preeti Gill and on today's video, we are going to be exploring the island of Ortigia in Syracuse, Italy. Now this is part two of our Sicilian adventure and in part one, which is linked somewhere up here, we explore different parts of Taramina and Catania. And that is exactly what we are going to be doing in Ortigia. Now because Ortigia is so small, tiny, and such an intimate island, there's so many tucked away and hidden places to eat and drink. Welcome back everybody. So once it was time to leave Taramina, um, we packed our bags, we got in our car, and we made our way down to Syracuse. Now we drove, but there are plenty of trains that will take you from Taramina straight into Syracuse. The moment you arrive in Ortigia, you are going to feel the intimacy of the island, just how small it is. And every doorway opens up to the Mediterranean Sea, so that breeze kind of follows you around all day. As you walk around all day, you're going to notice a lot of shops selling these. These are arancinis. Arancinis are delicious, crispy, deep fried Sicilian balls of rice. And they have this meat and mozzarella cheese filling with this delicious crunchy outer layer. You are going to be seeing arancinis all around as you walk around Syracuse and it's something you really want to try because it is a staple of the Sicilian region. Now as you start making your way into the center, you're going to pass by small cafes, restaurants, pizza shops, food markets, musicians, and various artists selling their craft. Eventually, you're going to find yourself in front of the main attraction of Ortigia, which is the Cathedral of Syracuse. All right, so you are going to pass by the Cathedral of Syracuse many times in the day because Ortigia is so small, but this is kind of the center and the heart of Ortigia. You've got amazing cafes all around, so we just actually ended up spending a lot of time in the cafe that was just in the front in the morning getting our coffees, so if you don't make it into the cathedral the first time, you're gonna have plenty of time to go back because you're just gonna be passing by it so many times. One thing also is you are going to be doing a lot of walking in Ortigia. You're going to be going into these little streets that are really hidden. And then they kind of just open up to these incredible places and bars and restaurants. Now while we were walking in one of these little streets, we came upon the most incredible little place called Cafe Al Sud. Now they sell pane cunzato. Basically it's seasoned bread with garlic, olive oil, and it's enriched with toppings like mozzarella, cherry tomatoes, and basil. And it's heated just for a few minutes in the oven before it arrives. So Cafe Al Sud, where they sell the pane punzato, is definitely a recommended place. It was great. And after that, we ended up taking another walk, and it led us to this very futuristic bar. <music> 
after Cafe Al Sud, we decided to go for another walk and that led us to this very futuristic bar and the name is Manes Ortigia. Now they serve great cocktails and little nipples to eat on, but the best part about this kind of futuristic bar is that it's completely outside, it's a little deserted, so you are kind of alone. Shortly after, we made our way to Mika 2. Now, Mika 2 has to probably be one of my top favorite bars here in Ortigia. They have these incredible small nibbles and Aperol spritz, but the reason you want to go here is for the sunset views. After Mikatu, we really wanted to find a place for dinner and we found this place called Retro Sina, which was recommended by a lot of the locals. The ambiance is lovely and we came back here twice for dinner. Okay, so this next place probably has to be one of the top bars in all of Italy and all the cities I've visited to. It is called Cortile Verga and it is tucked away, hidden in this beautiful old historic courtyard. And by nighttime, it's lit up by candle lights. Not only do they have excellent cocktails, the service is great and you cannot ask for a more beautiful location in Ortigia. for about three days. I do think that's enough if you just want to discover the island. If you want to stay longer and be more relaxed, I would absolutely recommend it. A week, even a week and a half is absolutely relaxing and so great. It's a very kind of slow, mellow lifestyle, which I'm very attracted to and like. Um, if you guys have any questions about Ortigia, Syracuse, or Sicily, I would be happy to answer them from my own personal trip. And a big thank you to you for being here and watching these videos. If you do like these videos and you are enjoying this travel content, I would love it if you could subscribe to help small content creators like myself continue to make these type of videos. If you guys have any questions, you know that you can leave a comment or message me. I am always responding. And that is it for our trip to Ortigia and Sicily. I hope that you guys and myself will be able to safely travel soon in the future. And I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you so much.